Hello, 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 and welcome to episode 200 of the Mo Money Podcast. I can't believe we've already reached 200. Um, that's crazy. That's a lot of freaking episodes. And I know lots of you, because I've talked to lots of you, have listened to every single episode. And for that, I am eternally grateful. That is amazing. Thank you so much for all of the uh, support and the downloads and the listens and the emails and the tweets. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. So awesome. 200. Woo woo. Um, this episode is, uh, I think you're going to get a little inspirational little kick in the pants to up your game. Uh, I am interviewing Natasha Koifman. She is a PR maven and also an angel investor. But how she got her start was she founded NKPR, which is a full service international public relations firm. And honestly, I walk by that office in downtown Toronto often. And I've always been curious what's going on in there. And it's kind of cool that I now, uh, I've got the opportunity to uh, interview Natasha, who's the, the president. So that's pretty cool. Now, Natasha has an amazing resume. When I was doing research on her before this interview, I was like, wow, I... I, if only I could one day have a resume, just a, like a smidgen of what hers is. Um, she is considered one of Canada's most powerful and innovative women. She's also been honored with awards from the Women in, Women's Executive Network and BizBash. And she, she recently completed a TEDx talk, uh, which we reference in this uh, episode. And I, I think it's actually really worth a, a check out if you just like go on the YouTube or, of course, just check out the show notes. I'll just include it in the show notes, jessicamorehouse.com slash 200. Um, so for this episode, we're really talking about kind of going, you know, from zero to 100. I don't think I'm using that reference, right? But what I'm trying to mean is we talk about how Natasha, she has reached this level of success that some of us can only imagine, but she, you know, didn't, she started from the ground, you know, zero and now she's here. And so, oh man, too many Drake references. I apologize in advance. Um, but, uh, I just find it so inspiring and motivating talking to women like Natasha, who really just, you know, came from kind of nothing and built up this amazing career and life for themselves. It really kind of just proves that anyone can do it. Um, it is not easy. It takes a lot of hard work, sweat and tears and years. You got to put your time in, but it's possible. And so uh, hopefully you're going to get a lot out of this. If you really want to, you know, specifically learn for this episode about entrepreneurship uh, and careers and just like making it and uh, showing up for yourself. I think you're going to love this. Uh, before I get to this interview with Natasha, here's just a few words about this episode's sponsor. This episode of the Mo Money Podcast is supported by TD Direct Investing. What are you investing for? Retirement? Sure, that's a common investment goal. But what about a major purchase or simply building wealth? With TD Direct Investing's new goal assist tool, you can build your confidence as a DIY investor by setting investment goals and creating a plan to help you reach them. Once you open your TD Direct Investing account, or maybe you already have one, navigate to the Goals tab on the top menu. That's where you can use Goal Assist to help define your investment goal, validate your plan, and monitor your progress all in one place. You can even set up multiple goals with different time horizons and investment profiles. Want to learn more? Visit the show notes for this episode or go to jessicamorehouse.com slash goal assist to watch my video tutorial. TD Direct Investing is a division of TD Waterhouse Canada, Inc., a subsidiary of the Toronto Dominion Bank. Thanks so much, Natasha, for joining me on the show. I'm excited to chat with you. I'm excited too. Thank you so much for having me. You're so welcome. Um, yeah, before this uh, interview, I did a little research on you, watched your TED Talk, and you've got a very, very inspiring story. I'd love to kind of start there. Um, just like watching your TED Talk, I'm like, wow, this woman has accomplished a lot. She was someone that I would aspire to be. And I'm sure a lot of other listeners would probably agree. Do you want to kind of um, share a little bit of your kind of origin story? Yeah, for sure. It's interesting with that TED Talk because I hadn't really talked about um, uh, what it took to kind of become me, if that makes any mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. And I felt it was really important when I agreed to doing the TED Talk, I felt it was really important to really uh, speak to that. So I wasn't born in uh, in Canada. I was actually born in the Ukraine. Mm -hmm. I was about four or five when uh, we immigrated to Canada. And I, the question I get asked so often now is, uh, because I do so much cause work and philanthropic work, is why? Mm -hmm. And that's what kind of brought me back to the storytelling piece about how my entire life kind of started, even as a child, because when we immigrated to Canada, 
there were so many incredible <clears throat> organizations and people that really came to support our family, strangers mm-hmm. that just gave of themselves. And um, I guess I never really forgot that. So as I grew up, um, I realized that it's so important to give back to others because I don't think that my family or myself would be who we are today or where we are today if it wasn't for the support of so many other people. Mm -hmm. And so I did talk about that. My entire TED Talk was really focused on the importance of showing up. And so Mm -hmm. the importance of showing up for ourselves, but the Mm -hmm. importance of showing up for others because we're so busy on our phones, we're busy with our jobs, we're Mm -hmm. busy in our lives that we sometimes don't pay attention to the world around us. And I used the example in my TED talk about how I, you know, went into uh, an Uber and often when we're all sitting in Uber, Ubers, mm-hmm. we're just on our phones. We don't yeah. even pay attention to the person that's driving us that, you know, holds our entire sort of safety in their hands. Mm-hmm. But um, this woman started talking to me, this Uber driver, and um, she was telling me about her life and how she left India and how she uh, left because her husband was very abusive and she didn't want her daughters to see that and how grateful she is to be in this country um, that has afforded her the opportunity to have this Uber job to be able to provide for her daughter. Mm-hmm. And yeah. uh, I kept asking her questions and, and she just looked at me and, and, I, and I said to her, I said, I'm so proud of you. And she looked at me and started crying. And she's like, no one has ever said that to me before. And to me, that is the essence of showing Mm -hmm. up. It doesn't take much for us to do that. And so my TED Talk was essentially really about the importance of showing up for others, but showing up for ourselves and making sure that we're present in our lives as opposed to just kind of coasting through it. Um, and, uh, And I do attribute a lot of that to me being me and, and, uh, you know, the gratitude I hold for the success that I've had, uh, you know, to date. Yeah, no, yeah, I really liked, um, you know, I think you you, uh, definitely mentioned something that's, I think, very, very important that a lot of people don't think about is um, the act of giving back. And I think some people just like, oh, that's financial. It's like, yes, you know, giving donations, um, helping charities, very important. However, I think um, just giving someone the time, or just like you said, just listening to someone. I mean, I love taking Ubers because I always ask questions. I, I just find I've never met an Uber driver that doesn't have some amazing, incredible story of how they got to be in that car driving me around. And I think we're in this kind of world of social media and just being busy and hustle culture that we forget to just take a minute and be like, we're alive. Let's live in the present a little bit more. But I really like what you said too, about showing up for yourself. Do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Cause I thought that was really, really important for people to know about. Well, showing up for yourself is a big part of understanding yourself when well enough to know what you need in order to live the best life you can possibly live. So mm-hmm. I think about when, I left my uh, the job that I had to start my own. At the time, I thought I was freelancing. I can't even say I thought that I was starting a firm. <laughs> um, I, I often say I became successful despite me. Um, <laughs> but I felt that I, I wanted the sense of purpose. I, I was almost, um, and I think when you're an entrepreneur, that that entrepreneurial spirit really speaks to you. It, it's, mm-hmm. it speaks loudly to you. So I remember having this job and just feeling a bit unsatisfied, mostly because I was working at an ad agency and I'd started the PR division. So they would kind of put everything on my desk and you're promoting everything that's put on your desk. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to just really focus on the things I was passionate about and work with people I was inspired by. And so I decided to go um, on my own thinking, even if I have one client, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. And um, it just... From there, it really led to one account, led to two, to three, to five. I went from working in my basement to having three employees, five employees, 10. And here we are now with offices in New York and Toronto and, you know, staff of 35. But um, when it comes to showing up for yourself, I listened to myself. I listened Mm -hmm. to what my body was saying to me, which is you need to find your purpose. And so Mm -hmm. I find even now, you know, at, at our firm, we have a very... Um, uh, a high retention rate. So our, our people really stay with us for a long time. We've had a lot of our employees uh, be with us, like our VP for 13 years, uh, mm-hmm. some of our directors for nine years. Um, and that's rare in our industry. And I think mm-hmm. it's because I really sort of 
think about what is it that they want to work on? What is it yeah. that excites them? So that we can uh, feed that entrepreneur, entrepreneurial spirit within the, you know, sort of the confines of our, uh, of our office and the people that are here. And um, you have to learn those lessons along the way and you have to pay attention. And that just goes back to um, show up for yourself, pay mm-hmm. attention to what's happening, to what your body's telling you, because that gut instinct is actually never going to let you down. It's when you don't mm-hmm. listen to it that you often start to veer off track. Mm -hmm. But when you listen to it, even though sometimes it's painful because Mm -hmm. you have to make some hard decisions to get to where you're supposed to be, um, it's real. Like Mm -hmm. there's a reason why that's happening. Absolutely. I think um, recently I watched the uh, kind of Netflix special by Brene Brown and she talked a lot about um, fear and failure, which I think are really important, especially when talking about entrepreneurship and, you know, trying to get to the level of success that you've achieved. How, and that's really honestly, when I talk to young people and they, they have these great dreams, they're these ideas to start their own company or just to become self-employed but they're like crippled by fear. And I know you mentioned, I, I think it was in your TED talk that you consider yourself an introvert. And I, I consider myself an introvert too. And people find that surprising because it's like, how could you do all the things that you do and still be an introvert? Because I think people think that introverts just like stay at home and don't talk to anybody. But what would you say to people that find it like very difficult just to make that first move? Because they're just, there's so much fear and they're just terrified of failing basically. Well, it's interesting. It is real. Like, I think we do live in an anxious generation right now. And mm-hmm. that anxiety is is real. Um, well, it sounds silly. One of the things I did do is I have a tattoo on my left arm that says be brave. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> um, and it is a constant reminder to work through the fear. Because I think about the times that I've had the most sort of progress and the most success and the most sort of learning, it came, it was always on the other side of fear. Truly. Mm -hmm. So I don't think I'd have the business I do if I didn't um, go through that. So I remember one instance uh, in particular, when I just started uh, my company, I had one client and I received a phone call from one of the biggest financial institutions in the country. And they had called me up because I'd done some work for them previously and said, hey, we need you to do an event for us in the next five days. It happened to be over the Christmas holidays and it mm-hmm. happened to also be in Quebec, which is, you know, a yeah. whole country in itself. Mm-hmm. So and I really was terrified because I thought, I don't know if I can do this. I'm, I'm on my own. Um I just don't know if I can do this. And I was terrified. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I asked her if I could call her back. And I, and I thought about it and I called her back and I said, of course I can do this. (laughs) (laughs) Meanwhile, I'm thinking, Oh my God, how am I going to actually figure this out? But you do. Mm -hmm. And it was super successful. And they became one of my biggest clients for about five years. And that's how I was able to actually build the company. And I, I think what that taught me early on was if you're afraid, jump in. Mm-hmm. You have to jump in because on the other side of that fear is actually where you're supposed to end up. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, bringing it back to you saying, you know, if you're an, an introvert, can you actually do that? Well, what I found really interesting when I was, uh, y- you know, younger, I mm-hmm. didn't love to go out. I didn't love to necessarily go to parties. Um, and I thought that I was just shy. Mm-hmm. But as I got older, I realized that's just being an introvert. And then I thought, well, can I do PR being an introvert? And then I realized I absolutely can. And books like, there was a great book that I read years ago by, I think her name was Susan Power, and it was uh, called The uh, the Power of, I think it was called The Power of Introverts. I might be wrong mm-hmm. about that. But it was fascinating because the only difference between an introvert and an extrovert is that you and I might um, go out two nights in a row, but mm-hmm. the third night we have to stay in because we need, to, <laughs> we need to recharge our batteries. Like during the film festival, for example, where I'm out, all day and all night. I take 10 minutes. Sometimes I'll go into the bathroom and I'll just sit there for 10 minutes to have some (laughs) alone time. And then I'm, I've recharged enough and then I can go back out there. And Mm -hmm. then I usually take a full week after tip just to recover. And I think that that's the difference. There is nothing, there are no boundaries for us and, Mm -hmm. and it, we can do everything an extrovert can do. It's just, we receive our energy differently. And Mm -hmm. I think knowledge is power. So the more we can learn about ourselves, the more uh, powerful we can become. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, no, definitely. I think um, preparation and educating yourself about whatever the heck you want to do is definitely like some good armor. And like you said, with that example of doing that event in Quebec, I think what I've learned to do, because if it were kind of up to like me, really, I would say no to anything because I'm terrified of failing and all those kind of other things. But you kind of have to say yes anyway. And so that's what I do. If I get something that scares me, I'll just like quickly write an email, be like, yep, yeah, for sure. And I'm like, oh, crap. Now I said I do it. I have to fulfill it. And like you said, it's like, you'll figure out a way. I don't know what it is, the human condition, but if you are kind of set with like a deadline or a project that you know is important, you'll just, you'll do it. And and even if you do fail, you learn some really great lessons. I think if you live a life and have never failed, you know, it's not a life I actually want to live because I think you'd almost be more crippled with um, fear because you've never experienced kind of like, okay, what is the worst case scenario? I totally agree with you. That That's what happened to me with the TED Talk. Mm. I received a phone call asking if I would do it. And I thought my initial reaction was no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, but of course I had uh, uh, Rebecca from my office looking at me saying, nope, you are going to do it. <laughs> and mm -hmm. she just responded <laughs> for me. Um, but I really thought about, well, what's the message? You know, mm -hmm why am I doing this? And there was a reason for it. And I really do feel a big part of it was to share uh, that message of the importance of showing up for each other in today's world, in today's society, and truly being grateful for the life that you have, because I think that's, that's missing a bit. And I think about a lot of the cause work that I do where um, with Artists for Peace and Justice, where I helped found the organization over 11 years ago, uh, we built the very first free high school in Port-au-Prince in Haiti. Mm -hmm. We've raised over $32 million. Um, that The only difference between actually accomplishing that and not is actually saying, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, because mm -hmm. it's, you know, 11 years ago, I could have very well said, uh, no, you know, I'm not really interested. Or instead I said, sure, I'll try this. Yeah. And, you know, slowly but surely over the years, you increase the awareness, you're able to raise money, and, and you're able to accomplish something really uh, important. And truly the only difference is saying yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I know one thing that it seems like you're very good at, and you probably have to be good at in PR is networking and connecting with people, which I think some people have a hard time to do. And it could also be because we are in this digital world, it's even harder for people to kind of get those real life skills of networking. What do you suggest for people just kind of starting out or, or just need a lot of help in terms of like, how do I do this naturally and not look weird <laughs> at a party or a conference or whatever? I, I think it has to be authentic and you yeah. have to be you. Um, yeah. Because I'm an introvert, I actually don't love crowds and I don't love parties. So for me, I would always look at fostering those one-on-one -on -one relationships. And I would look at what is that common ground between me and the person that I'm speaking to and connected mm. to. And that's how you sort of build those really important and meaningful relationships. You're not going to connect with every single person and nor should you, but mm -hmm. should you try and find your people? Yeah, you should. And, and you find your common ground, but I think you have to be authentic. And, you know, I actually think with social media, it's easier mm -hmm. to network because I, I've had uh, many young women or, you know, just women in general that have uh, reached out to me on social media that I mentor now. Mm -hmm. And it's because, and th again, they reached out, they um, have an incredible story. And I felt that connection. Mm -hmm. And they and, and I think that social media actually makes it easier in some ways, because, mm -hmm. again, you find your people. Yeah, you don't have to follow everyone. And you don't have to comment on everything. But if you feel a connection to someone, I'm I think it is important to actually leave a comment. And um, that is a way how you foster uh, relationships. There's a girl mm -hmm. that I mentor right now. And it's because she reached out to me on social media and I'm now helping her build her business. Wow. And um, I, I, I think that that's how it's done. Authenticity is authenticity, whether it's done in the digital world or whether mm -hmm. it's done, um, you know, face to face. Yeah. And I think, yeah, a lot of people, because really when you think about it, it's easier than ever to connect or to reach out. Because if there weren't social media, maybe people wouldn't know how to contact you. It's like, how do I, you know, connect with them? They, you know, it's hard to sometimes find someone's email if you really want to reach out to them. So it is easy in that respect. But I think lots of people are, it's like, again, it goes back to that fear. It's like, what if they don't go get back to me? Or what if they're not interested? But it's, I, I think you just, yeah, you have to take that leap of faith because something amazing can happen, like you becoming their mentor. <laughs> 
Well, it's the difference between doing and not doing. And I think that, you know, that seems to be sort of what what we're talking about on Mm. this podcast is just do it. Yeah. You know, like what's the worst that can happen? Someone might not respond to you, but then if you do it again, they will respond to you. Um, I had this conversation with someone yesterday where uh, one of my colleagues had said, well, I emailed uh, this person four days ago. I think I'll wait another week to follow up. I'm like, nope, I think you should follow up actually daily because if I don't respond to someone after that first email, it's not because my intention isn't to respond to them. It's Mm. because I didn't respond to them fast enough and I have five other emails that just push that one email down. So if someone emails me again the next day, I'm thrilled because that means, okay, great. It's at the top of my inbox. 10 years ago, it might've been annoying. It's not annoying now. It's just what you have to do in Mm -hmm. order to um, sometimes get a response and not because the person doesn't want to respond, but because it's just, we are constantly being engaged with. So sometimes you just have to engage a little harder. Yeah. What would you say, I guess, is the right step to approach someone? Because I I get um, a lot of, you know, people contact me and they always do like, I'd love to take you out for coffee, which personally, I'm like, I actually don't have time for coffee. I'd much prefer a chat over, you know, video or phone. What is kind of your suggestion for like, if someone wants to reach out to someone they they really look up to and they want to learn, like, what's the best approach? Nobody wants to go for coffee and nobody wants to go for lunch <laughs> yeah, like, <it's> true. <laughs> let's just, or a drink. So yeah. let's just be clear about that. <laughs> I, I agree. When I get those as well, I'm like, okay. And I, that's when I might not respond because I just think you have no concept of life right now. Yeah. Because, it's like, no. <laughs> well, that's exactly it. And and I remember getting that at, like from people and I, and that I will say is a, a bit annoying because it just means that they're thinking about their life, mm. but they're not thinking about, okay, this woman is busy. And mm-hmm. if I want even, you know, 15 minutes of her time, then I want to make it as easy for her as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. So for anybody listening that is sending emails about coffee and lunches and drinks, don't do that. Um, (laughs) But what I will say is video conferences are great. FaceTime is great. A phone call is great. Um, I don't mind if they want to pop into the office, you know, for for half an hour, and I'm happy to do that as well. Um, But it has to be you have to make it easy because we're swamped. Mm -hmm. And so I think most people do want to give of their time and give of themselves because I think the only way we're going to get better as humans is to actually, you know, help each other and and help each other rise. Mm -hmm. So I think that we want to uh, support each other, but we do have to make it, we have to be mindful of the other person's uh, time for sure, Mm -hmm. because uh, we don't have a lot of it. No, and I think another thing that I've realized is a lot of people aren't very clear when they're kind of pitching, hey, can I talk to you about what they want? Like literally sometimes I'm like, what do you want? What are you looking for? Don't be like, I'd like to pick your brain. (laughs) It's so true, actually. You want them to come in with, I I often ask this question, so what's your goal? What's your Mm -hmm. five-year plan? Where do you want to be in five years? Because I agree, pick your brain about what, really? Yeah. We can talk about anything. (laughs) Well, that's exactly it. And I've had a couple of people where they might not know, and sometimes they're coming to you because they don't know. And I think that's fair. But I think I would always ask the question, because I think that's on us, you know, as let's say mentors ask the question of where do you see your life in five years? Mm -hmm. You do have to visualize it um, because that's super important. I just went to see a talk. Tommy Hilfiger uh, was in town and he was Mm -hmm. doing this innovation series for Audi. And he was saying that part of the reason he thinks he's successful is because he manifested it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to sort of envision the life that you want and the person you want to be and the work that you want to do. And then I can actually help that person achieve that based on understanding where they want to be. But if they Mm -hmm. don't know where they want to be, because sometimes I get that too, where it's like, well, I think I might want to do this and I think Mm -hmm. I might want to do that. And I'll say, why don't you give some thought Mm -hmm. to your five-year plan? And then let's talk because you can't do the work for them. And I think Mm -hmm. that's really important too. Like mentorship isn't doing the work for for, uh, the person that you're mentoring. It's to kind of give them some support and some tools to be able to get there on their own. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I know you know, it's, it's very clear that you, uh, really do have a focus on helping others, uh, being a mentor, but also specifically, I think uplifting women, which I think is so important, uh, in this time that we're in now. And I know you, um, have started or co-founded, uh, another company called, uh, 
An8, which is an angel investing company. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? I found it very interesting, especially some of the stats about um, angel investing and uh, women founders and them not really finding the support or the financial aid that they they require to like start these awesome companies. It is really surprising. We, st- my husband and I, started an eight. Um, I just got married recently, and I really, mm-hmm. I believe in uh, what I call work life integration. Mm-hmm. I think that when we're always striving for this work life balance, we're always failing because there mm-hmm. is no balance. And mm-hmm. I think the moment you stop striving for that, you can actually achieve fulfillment. And so, my, I, I work a lot, and um, I felt like. My husband and I thought we have the same belief and values when it comes to business. So we decided to start this angel investment company um, to really support. Um, it, the intent was to support more female run uh, companies. Mm-hmm. Uh, but certainly it's really more like companies that are run by individuals that um, you know are smart, hardworking, mm-hmm. have solid business plans. So it's not just female, female focused. Mm-hmm. Although I found those stats staggering, yeah. uh, because most female based companies don't uh, get the funding that uh, that they deserve or that they need. Um, so we started this company together, and you know our early investments were in, in brands like Flow Water, which is a Canadian based company. Yeah, that, I see that uh, everywhere now. <laughs> yeah, which now has North American distribution. They just did a partnership with Gwyneth Paltrow. We're about to announce two really, really big partnerships uh, shortly. Uh, we just uh, about a year ago made an investment in Hounds Vodka, which is also a Canadian mm-hmm. uh, company that we just signed a big national distribution deal with Trajectory, um, and we're about to go to go into the U.S. We're about to do something really, really great with a local um, chef um, in, in sort of that um, that, that uh, food and beverage space as well. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, we're sort of on our way there. But I think at the end of the day, it's I've, you know, being a marketer, I feel like I've uh, learned a few things in the last mm-hmm. 20 years about being able to build brands. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's my my privilege, my honor, and my duty mm-hmm. uh, to be able to take some of that knowledge to help others achieve the success that uh, they uh, they deserve and will work really, really hard to achieve. Absolutely. What kind of pieces of advice, and this is probably a, a really big question, but you know, give whatever you can. For someone, say, you know, listening who has aspirations of, you know, making their own startup or their own company and seeing, you know, hearing you who has had so much success, um, has run your, your own uh, PR company for so many years, you know, I think a lot of people don't know where to start or even if it's achievable. I mean, I find it very impactful, you know, talking to people like you who have done it. So there's proof that yes, it is possible. But I think a lot of uh, people just think it it just looks like a huge mountain. How on earth am I ever going to climb that? Well, I think a big thing is you have to work really hard. Mm, like yeah. <laughs> social, the social media makes it seem that everyone's an overnight success. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Right. And they're not. And yeah. sometimes I think that it would be so much, it's harder to achieve success now just because what happens is if you ever look at your phone at the end of the day and think about how much time you spent online, mm-hmm. right on social, you might've spent three hours, four hours on social media looking at other people's feeds, not focusing on yourself. So Mm -hmm. those are four hours you won't get back. And those are four hours you should be actually focusing on yourself. So one of the things I rarely, rarely do is ever look at the competition. I certainly look at, um, you know, industry news and I Mm -hmm. read, you know, Inc. And I read Forbes and I read, you know, Fast Company and and I read a lot, but I don't go on any competitor sites. And that's because if I'm spending time on that site, I'm not spending time on, on my own business. Mm-hmm. And that's super, super important. So um, I think you have to understand that you're going to work hard and you have to think about what it is that you want to accomplish and where you want your your business to be. Like I always mm-hmm. think backwards. So I, I don't just think about all the tactics and things I have to do. I think about what are those tactics going to help me achieve? So I almost look at the end goal first, Mm -hmm. and then I, I um, look at trying to achieve that. And I think most people are just overwhelmed by, Oh my God, Mm -hmm. 
I just have this mound of stuff to do, but they need to think about where that's going to actually lead them. So I think working hard and focusing on yourself and the mm-hmm. business and the, you know, sort of the act at hand is super, super important mm-hmm. um, because I think we can get caught up in this place of, but everyone else is doing so well, but that mm-hmm. means you're thinking about everyone else and you're not actually thinking about yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the other thing is patience. It yes. saves us a lot. Um, we're not kind enough to ourselves or not, we're not patient enough because we think everyone's achieving this overnight success. Mm-hmm. We're forgetting that you have to have some patience to achieve what you're going to achieve. We're all individuals. So some people get there faster. Some people, it takes them a little longer, but at the end of the day, um, be kind to yourself, have some patience and know that you will get there as well. Um, mm-hmm. because that's the advice I would actually have given my 20 year old self. And if I, I could have avoided some situations probably mm-hmm. had I been a little bit more patient with myself because I just thought that in my 20s I should be super successful mm-hmm. well the reality is is my 20s really were a time for me to learn everything I could learn and because I put up this barrier of I should know it I wasn't actually learning that was a wall between me and absorbing all this incredible knowledge I could have been taking in Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, that's like a big lesson. I feel like I keep on learning as I get older. I'm like, oh, things that seemed so hard to grasp in my 20s, I totally get now. And that's because of time and experience. Oh, what a crazy concept. But I think we forget, we definitely look at those like people who have had you know, success pretty easily, or it's only taking them a few years. But I think we need to remind ourselves in order to achieve, I th- I'd say like lasting success, which is what we'd want. I don't want, you know, success that lasts for a little bit and then it's over. I want lasting success. That does take time. It takes years. It can take decades and that's okay. Like just be patient with yourself and keep moving forward. For sure. And mm-hmm. by the way, success will change. Your definition of success mm-hmm. will change as time goes on too. Yeah. Right. Like it's like, success kind of turns into something a little different with, you know, every year that you mature and with, you know, as time kind of goes on and as every industry kind of changes as well. I think that's, that's important to acknowledge. So that really goes back to listen to yourself and Mm -hmm. and show up for yourself every step of the way, uh, because that's important. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much, Natasha, for taking the time to chat with me. This is a, a really great uh, chat, and I think you're going to inspire. I mean, you are already inspiring so many people, but I know lots of people listening will be like, oh, wow. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. This was really, really a great chat. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, if people want to um, learn more about you or get in touch, how can they do that? Um, on Instagram, Twitter, uh, my feed is at Natasha and KPR, and our website is NKPR.net. Perfect. Thank you so much. Perfect. Thanks. <laughs> and that was episode 200 of the Momenty Podcast with Natasha Koifman of NKPR. You can check them out at nkpr.net. You can also uh, check her out and follow her on Instagram and uh, Twitter. Her handles are Natasha NKPR. Super easy. Also, make sure to check out the show notes, jessicamorehouse.com slash 200 to find out more information about what we chatted about. I think you're going to enjoy it. I'll also, of course, include, like I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, uh, the um, video of her TED Talk, which I just loved. It really kind of, I don't know, it inspired me. I love a good TED Talk, I'll tell you that. Um, I have some very important things to share, so do not go away. Just a few uh, words about this episode's lovely sponsor. This episode of the Momony Podcast is supported by TD Direct Investing. You know what I hear often from listeners like you? I want to try out DIY investing, but it kind of scares me. Totally. It can be scary and overwhelming, even if you've listened to all my episodes on investing and read all the investing books you've been recommended. When you're a DIY investor, you're in the driver's seat and you have to make all the decisions for your investment portfolio. That's a lot of pressure, which is why I am totally here for TD Direct Investing's new investment planning tool called Goal Assist. It's available to new and current clients and is an awesome way of helping DIY investors identify, monitor, and review their investment goals. When you use Goal Assist, you'll be guided step-by-step to identify your investment goal, risk tolerance, and time horizon. You can even set up multiple goals with different time horizons and investor profiles to create a clear roadmap of where you want to go and how to get there. Want to learn more? Just visit the show notes for this episode or go to jessicamorehouse.com slash goal assist to watch my video tutorial. TD Direct Investing is a division of TD Waterhouse Canada Inc., a subsidiary of the Toronto Dominion Bank. All right, all right, all right. Well, um, so first, 
first for first, um, I did a couple events last week and there were people that showed up who were listening to the podcast. So thank you so much for coming and saying hi. Um, loved it. I, you know, it just makes me feel really good, um, to meet my podcast listeners and there's uh, more chances to say hello and, and come hang out with me. I've got some events coming up. I've got one tonight, actually. It is called how to run a successful business from anywhere hosted by Rogers. You can find more information about that in the show notes or all of my events are listed on jessicamorehouse.com slash community. If you go to my website, it is under resources. It's very easy to find. Um, and there's a list of all my workshops and webinars coming up or the ones that I've done in the past. Um, so check out that because I do believe you need to register. I don't think you can just show up. So uh, again, just check that out in the show notes or on the community page. Um, if you can't make that, I'm going to be doing um, a, another presentation called Money Moves with Jessica Morehouse, what to know before buying a home hosted by BMO. Um, it is going to be taking place at this really cool place called Stacked, which is in uh, Toronto. Uh, it's basically this little mini village that's completely made out of shipping containers. And there's, I don't know, it's pretty crazy. Um, and I am going to be doing a series with BMO at their location at the Stacked little village thing um, through now until the fall uh, on a lot of different topics. And this one specifically is about home buying. And so if you're thinking about getting into, you know, the market, buying your first home, I'm going to be sharing some very important things that you need to know before jumping in. I've been a homeowner for three years now. I've done two rounds of house hunting. One was not successful. One was successful. And I have learned a lot. So if you want to learn more about buying a home, definitely want to come. And this is a free event, FYI, free event. And again, I'll include um, links in the show notes and just go to the community page. Um, 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 this may or may not be exciting for you, but it is for me. Uh, finally have a proper kind of YouTube situation set up in my home office. Finally have like a proper home office, to be honest. And I am super excited to be finally making some proper YouTube videos. Uh, really what I want to do, what I find, what, what I do when I go on the YouTube is basically I'm trying to find an answer to my question. I want someone to explain things for me. And I can sometimes, especially when it comes to money questions, there's not a heck of a lot out there. So that's what I want to do. Make those those videos to help you, um, you know, find the answers to your questions. So um, I'm starting to, you know, make them right now and gather new ideas. If you have an idea for what you would like to see in a video, hit me up over Twitter or email Jessica, Jessica Morehouse.com or Instagram or however you'd like to contact me. There's probably a way to contact me. So let me know what you, uh, what questions you have that you'd like to be answered in a video. And also subscribe to me on YouTube. Just go to Jessica Morehouse.com slash YouTube to subscribe. Would really appreciate it. Um, that is really it for me at this moment. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, I'll see you back here real soon for another episode of the Mo Money Podcast. <laughs>